Today's a day all about green, but there was a whole lot of brown in San Antonio yeah. after the snow and ice we saw a month ago. A lot of questions about what survived in our yards and what to do with what's left now. So to answer those, we have David Rodriguez, a horticulturalist with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service, Bear County, joining us now in today's Q&A. Thanks so much for being here. First Thank question, you first question to you, how do you know if something made it or not at this point? Yeah, you're right. It's been about a month and uh, we're on the right track. Today's St. Patrick's Day, so we need to start greening up and spring starts Saturday. So we've uh, been really very unusual hard freeze that we had. And uh, we can kind of talk about palm trees, you know, palms in general and sago palms, which are like uh, palm like plants. If you have not done so, as long as the main trunk is nice and sturdy and the center does not pull out where the new growth comes out of, we want to, if you have not done so, completely remove 100% of all the dead leaves, the fronds. If there's any green, just leave the green. And like palms and many other plants, uh, we'll say early May, if the new growth doesn't come out by May, we might have to do some uh, replacements at that time. And then uh, citrus, you know, a lot of people grow a lot of citrus yeah. trees around here. And our valley didn't get hit hard in our grapefruit industry, but a lot of backyard gardeners are probably going to lose a lot of citrus trees. So on citrus and a lot of these um, evergreen shrub types, um, go ahead and cut into with your fingernail in the wood, the bark. And if there's any green on it, uh, wait on citrus until new growth tries to push in the springtime. Um, citrus or grafted trees and have a very aggressive rootstock. And we're gonna see a lot of the shoots emerge from the very bottom and we don't want that to take the tree. So we need to, to remove those for sure. And David. only prune citrus when the new growth starts coming out. David, you know, I, I'm guessing since some of my plants blew away today that they're not going to make it. But that, <laughs> we, when we're talking about even turf grass, when we're talking about a lawn, is that something we need to worry about with all the cold weather? And what's the best thing we can do to help our lawns, you know, yeah. now so, before before we get yes. too much into the season? Definitely. So we we grow warm season turf grasses. Uh, St. Augustine, which is a coarse blade grass should be waking up right now. You should see uh, the blades greening up because it typically doesn't go completely dormant. Zosia and Bermuda lawns should be waking up here pretty soon. Now, if you have lots of green green and it, you know it's not the turf grass waking up, it's probably winter weeds that are trying to push flowers and seeds out. And um, we need to pull those out, mow those out as much as possible. And core aeration, which is a machine that extracts a, a core of soil, a three inch core of soil out. You can do that this week and put a lawn dressing out there, compost lawn dressing. And then we wanna look at the lawns around mid April, early May at the latest, keep the weeds in check of course, and then fertilize um, at that time frame, probably after the second mowing, after these lawns wake up and start active growth for the springtime. If you have predominantly weeds over lawn, look at it again in two weeks. You might have to kill out, remove the weeds, and we might have to do some spot resodding of some of these lawns here and there. So I'm, I'm curious if the snow and ice is going to affect when we can plant in the spring. A lot of people looking around at their yard saying, I need some help. So is now the time or are we close to the time of when it's all right to start planting? I tell you what, with uh, the bad hair day today and the temperatures <laughs> that y'all been giving us, this is good planting time. You know, St. Patty's Day's today, Saturday's the start of spring. All we need uh, is y'all uh, call up some good rain for us, but I, I think it's a good time. You know, this is a good time to get your first wave of spring tomatoes planted. And, but we want to tell folks on a lot of these perennials and shrubs, you know, that have been cut back to the green wood or basically to ground level, don't replace those right away. Let's wait about May. And if you don't see good active new growth return on these plants, 
Uh, then you might do some spot replacement in May. And then the big test on a lot of other plants, particularly evergreen shrubs, after they're cut back, hopefully to the greenwood, is if they can make it through the heat of July and August and they have to look good in September. Otherwise, some of those plants also might need to be replaced in the fall time. Interesting. So don't replace anything right now is basically what you're saying. Yeah, perennials that are cut back to the ground. Let's be patient. Evergreen shrubs and other uh, plant species. If you see green in the bark, cut them back to the greenwood and let's just be patient and see how they come out by May. And then we'll go from there if we do need to do replacements if they don't look pretty by then. All right. So many of us in the same boat. David, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. David Rodriguez, horticulturalist with Texas A&M San Antonio. And David, Thank I'll you. talk to Adam Kasky and tell him you need some rain. We all need some <laughs> yeah, rain for our place. So, so I'll, I'll put a word in for you. <laughs> Thank have, you. Appreciate have, it. Have a great one. Pleasure being with you. you. Too. Thank you. We'll be right back.